Hey everybody, Jazzy here, and today it is my pleasure to welcome Walter into The Constant. This will be the fourth character exclusive to the multiplayer version of Don't Starve, and considering the expansive assortment of features, I'm genuinely surprised that this character was not released as a paid DLC. Whatever the reasons why, Clay is undoubtedly wonderful. Thank you for the free content. Let's show them some love by buying a couple skins. Alright, let's jump straight into the character. His max hunger and health are on the low side, but he does get a decent amount of sanity, which is a good thing because Walter's relationship with sanity is complex. Starting with the big advantage, Walter is not affected by any passive sanity loss. This includes the drain of dusk and night, being in the caves, or standing near mobs with a negative sanity aura, which most mobs have. However, Walter can still benefit from positive sanity auras such as Glomer, Followers, Cisterns, and Dwarf Stars. This includes negative auras that are reversed from wearing a Bee Queen crown, so you can still use Nightmare Lights and Evil Flowers with the crown to restore sanity. Walter also receives a decent sanity boost when he's within 10 units of at least 5 trees, and that includes pretty much any tree. So clearly he's very much at home in the woods, which is good because we're gonna need a lot of monster meat and silk for his unique needs. Unfortunately, this does not protect Walter from the dangers of insanity, and here's why. First off, the kid does not benefit from clothing that restores sanity. To the Tamashanter crew, that is going to hurt. But not as much as Walter actually getting hurt. Because listen to this, every time Walter gets hit, he loses 200% of that damage from his sanity. So a spider bites you for 20 health and you lose 40 sanity on the spot. Now, he is able to make a Pine Tree Pioneer hat, which will reduce this penalty to only 100% of damage taken, but this means that the hat is going to be important while fighting if you're trying to keep your sanity up. Honestly though, it should probably reduce more. Walter will also start to lose sanity when his health is below 90%, and this strain starts off nominal, like a little more than one per minute, but it scales considerably the more health he loses, all the way up to like 12 a minute. So you will definitely want to keep his health above 117 as much as possible to avoid this drain. Okay, let's talk about fighting mechanics. So the sanity loss from damage occurs after armor reduction, so only what comes out of your health gets calculated. This means that Walter is really going to benefit from armor with high damage reduction such as marble suits, thulocyte suits, and knight armor. Now, He's gonna need to resort to body armor if the pioneer hat needs to be worn to mitigate sanity loss, and sacrificing that head slot is going to be painful for many fights. Despite the passive sanity perk, Walter still suffers from sanity loss while holding dark swords and wearing knight armor, plus he still takes 10% of total damage to his sanity from the armor. Honestly, this seems a bit unfair to a character who already has massive sanity issues while fighting, has huge incentive to wear body armor, and doesn't suffer from any other passive drains. But it is what it is. The good news is that in fights like Fuel Weaver and Deer Clops, where the sanity drain is overwhelming, you won't really need a Bee Queen crown. And that's a good thing, because that crown is not going to be very fun to get. But more on that later! Now, of course there's always the option to restore sanity via food, such as cooked cactus, cooked green caps, taffy, jerky, etc. But, Walter has another nice perk for restoring sanity and health the portable camping tent. Compared to a regular tent, this thing has almost twice the uses and the recipe is cheaper. And of course, it's portable. Sleeping is going to be an important method for restoring sanity after a fight, and Walter has the added benefit of only losing hunger at half the usual rate while sleeping in any tent or roll. But if all of that sanity penalty wasn't enough of a disadvantage, Walter does in fact have one other major downside when it comes to fighting. He's allergic to bees. This means that on top of the usual damage from a bee attack, Walter will also receive a flat 10 damage that cannot be reduced by armor. Say goodbye to tanking Bee Queen with beekeeper hats because each sting with a hat will hurt your health for 22 and your sanity for 44. Not really a sustainable fighting scenario. Body armor with high damage reduction is going to be the call if you plan on tanking. But, oh my god, I haven't talked about the slingshot yet. Walter has an infinite use slingshot. Well, infinite as long as you have the ammo. And there's some interesting choices here. So to start, you can turn a rock into 10 pebbles, and you can prototype more powerful ammo at science and magic stations. 
The stronger the ammo, the higher tier station it will require to prototype, so you can get gold rounds at a science machine and marbles at an alchemy engine. At a Presta Hattitator, you can get freeze rounds which have twice the power of an ice staff hit. At a Shadow Manipulator, you can get the cost prohibitive slowdown rounds, which work for most mobs and last a decent amount of time. The Cursed Rounds are the real slugs though. They can only be made at a pseudoscience station, and they deal 51 damage with a 50% chance of spawning a Shadow Tentacle that can hit twice for another 34 damage per hit. So against a stationary target, you can average around 85 damage per round, which is not too shabby at all. The poop pellets are cheap enough to craft, but they only really work on a select number of mobs, and the distraction perk doesn't last for a super long time. Yeah, I don't know. There might be some crowd control potential in there, but I would need to experiment with these a little more. You can also load Belty Marbles into your slingshot for 59.5 damage. What's interesting is that, with the exception of Moonstone, all of the ingredients for this ammo can be found in the caves, so if you're planning a Ruins Rush, you'll certainly have plenty of ammo on hand for sniping bats and monkeys, provided you've prototyped the ammo. And what better vantage point to 360 no-scope your foes from a cowardly distance than on top of Wobi? your eternal furry escort. This little lady follows you everywhere and provides nine slots of storage just like Chester. However, she can't be killed, so your item's generally safer unless there are monkeys around. You can feed your monster dog monster food, which, yes, includes durians. If you feed her 50 hunger worth, such as three monster meats, she will transform into Big Woby, which you can ride like a beefalo for two and a half days. At first, her ride speed was abysmal, but a subsequent patch actually made her amazing to ride. Her speed scales as her hunger decreases, so at her top speed, Wobi will be 66% faster than the default player speed. Then it'll slowly scale down to about 33%. If her hunger reaches zero, then she reverts back to little Wobi. But her hunger only drains at like 20 per day, so it's definitely feasible to keep her topped off with monster meat in her big form in order to maintain that maximum speed. And you can totally carry statues and suspicious marbles with Wobi and even bring her down into the caves. And with this speed boost, we will certainly see plenty of cave strategies emerge from this perk. Walter has some interesting campfire abilities. He can tell stories to other survivors around a campfire at night, which will restore a very nominal amount of sanity. Honestly, I'm not sure it's worth the cost to my own sanity, having to sit there and listen to the nasally ramblings of an awkward adolescent with something to prove. And I'm one to complain about a nasally rambler with something to prove. But if you're still itching for a song after all that story time, slam some glomer guts or a tall bird egg to be treated to a prepubescent carol. Walter's final perk is the ability to cook quickly over a campfire. This also works on fire pits, scaled furnaces, and presumably lava pools. And this is honestly an underrated perk considering how much time you save with large cooking orders, like, say, a stack of cactus or monster meat. I'm glad that Warley and Willow are not the only iron chefs on the block anymore. As far as I can see, that's all the features worth covering with Walter. I do look forward to playing him a bit over on Twitch, and I will certainly share any insights gained the more I experience the character in action. But until then, here are my initial thoughts. As far as Ruins Rushing goes, Walter will definitely have some unique advantages, but none of them are particularly overpowered. Take Sanity, for example. You will most likely not be insane while traveling around the caves or discovering the ruins, but the moment you start fighting and taking damage, your sanity will drop instantly. So you will still be insane, for sure. But the difference is once you kill a couple shadow creatures and get your sanity back up, you won't go crazy again unless you take more damage. The ammo is nice to pick up as you ruins dive, but you need to prototype it first. The cursed rounds are nice and not incredibly expensive, so I would definitely stock up on them if you're visiting a pseudoscience station. There should be plenty of thulocyte walls to hammer for fragments, and you can always convert whole thulocyte back to fragments by crafting the walls and then hammering them. The sanity is going to be tricky to manage in longer boss fights, but can still be mitigated by preparing more sanity foods like cooked cactus. Jerky will take care of health and sanity at the same time. I will definitely be experimenting more with unloading nightmare creatures while insane, just to be able to simply ignore sanity while fighting. Marble and Thulocyte suits will be much more important to Walter because of the extra damage reduction. And considering how little they are typically considered in favor of head armor, I like seeing a character have a compelling reason to use them. 
Again, big bummer about the night armor. I was really looking forward to that. Wobi is absolutely amazing. The immediate availability of night inventory slots is going to make inventory management a lot easier in the early game. Rushing the suspicious, the suspicious, the suspicious, the suspicious, the suspicious. Rushing the suspicious marble pieces for the shadow bosses will be quicker and much less resource intensive than taming a beefalo. Big Wobi's speed is pretty good and lasts a decent amount of time. With enough monster meat, Walter will certainly be getting around quicker early on. The slingshot is certainly not overpowered. Its range is limited, and the slow animation makes the damage per second abysmal compared to melee weapons. That said, it does provide methods for continual range damage and indirect fighting advantages. The slow ammo is expensive, but certainly has some niche uses, especially in fights where the mobs tend to be faster than the player. The cursed ammo has decent damage, especially versus slower mobs such as spider queens and tentapillars. Though these mobs usually have a lot of health, so I'm not sure how practical range fighting will prove to be. Honestly, if they were going for a glass cannon character, I think they probably should have made the slingshot ammo a little stronger, even if it meant they had to nerf his damage modifier. I think I would have preferred that. All things considered though, I think Walter's a balanced character. His advantages and disadvantages are similarly massive, but given the option between him and a character with less pronounced downsides, I'll take the steep learning curve any day. The Boy Scout is going to take some training on the player's part to become an effective character, but at the same time he offers some unique early game advantages to the less experienced player. I plan to give the kid a fighting chance, and I hope that you do the same. So let me know in the comments what you think. Is Walter going to be a good team player, or are his disadvantages going to cripple veteran players in the late game? Look forward to hearing your thoughts, and thanks so much for watching. See you next time.